beyond the days of hope and mystery, we see a light of faith renewed, and in our longing we thirst for guidance to walk with you. Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. In the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Welcome. I welcome also those who have 
viewing this Mass via lo the live stream. It is great to have you all here with us. We do appreciate your patience and your cooperation in these unusual circumstances. Please follow the guidance of the seating ambassadors at the time of communion and also at, at the time of departure from the building. And at the sign of peace, you're welcome to exchange a wave or a nod while, of course, maintaining the proper distance. Brethren, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do. Through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault, therefore I ask, Blessed Mary, ever virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Kyrie eleison. Christe eleison. Kyrie eleison. Let us pray. By your help, we beseech you, Lord our God. May we walk eagerly in that same charity with which, out of love for the world, your Son handed himself over to death. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. A reading from the book of the prophet Jeremiah. The days are coming, says the Lord, when I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and the house of Judah. It will not be like the covenant I made with their fathers, the day I took them by the hand to lead them forth from the land of Egypt. For they broke my covenant, and I had to show myself their master, says the Lord. But this is the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel after those days, says the Lord. I will place my law within them and write it upon their hearts. I will be their God, and they shall be my people. No longer will they have need to teach their friends and relatives how to know the Lord. All from least to greatest shall know me, says the Lord, for I will forgive their evil doings and remember their sin no more. The word of the Lord.
A reading from the letter of the Hebrews to the Hebrews. In the days when Christ Jesus was in the flesh, he offered prayers and supplications with loud cries and tears to the one who was able to save him from death. And he was heard because of his reverence. Son though he was, he learned obedience from what he suffered. And when he was made perfect, he became the source of eternal salvation for all who obeyed him. The word of the Lord. Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Some Greeks who had come to worship at the Passover feast came to Philip, who was from Bethsaida in Galilee, and asked him, Sir, we would like to see Jesus. Philip went and told Andrew. Then Andrew and Philip went and told Jesus. Jesus answered them, the hour has come for the Son of Man to be glorified. Amen, amen, I say to you, unless a grain of wheat falls to the ground and dies, it remains just a grain of wheat. But if it dies, it produces much fruit. Whoever loves his life loses it, and whoever hates his life in this world will preserve it for eternal life. Whoever serves me must follow me, and where I am, there also will my servant be. The Father will honor whoever serves me. I am troubled now, yet what should I say? Father, save me from this hour? But it was for this purpose that I came to this hour. Father, glorify your name. Then a voice came from heaven, I have glorified it and will glorify it again. The crowd there heard it and said it was thunder, but others said an angel has spoken to him. Jesus answered and said, This voice did not come for my sake, but for yours. Now is the time of judgment on this world. Now the ruler of this world will be driven out. And when I have lifted up from the earth, I will draw everyone to myself. He said this, indicating the kind of death he would die. The Gospel of the Lord. Jeremiah is a prophet who does not mince words. The job of a prophet is to be an instrument of God, to allow God to speak through him, in order that the people may hear God's message. And the message that Jeremiah relays to God's people consists of very stern words. The book of Jeremiah laments Israel's unfaithfulness to God, their disobedience to God's law, their shame and their sin, their stubborn idolatry, their following false prophets, and their worship of false gods. Jeremiah does not mince words. The book of Jeremiah warns of God's wrath, of impending punishment, and the fall of Jerusalem. Yet, amid all these very stern reproaches and dire warnings, there is a bright spot, a ray of sunshine. And that ray of sunshine is today's first reading from Jeremiah chapter 31. Behold, the days are coming, says the Lord, when I will make a new covenant 
with the house of Israel. It will not be like the covenant I made with their fathers, for they broke my covenant. But this is the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel. I will place my law within them and write it on their hearts. I will be their God, and they shall be my people. The entire Old Testament is the story of God making a covenant with his people, and then his people breaking that covenant. A covenant is more than either a promise or a contract. It is an exchange. It is more than a promise because the exchange is mutual, and it is more than a contract because it is an exchange not of goods but of persons. The covenant made between God and his people is perhaps best explained as a marriage covenant. In the covenant of marriage, the man and woman give themselves to each other for life. The marriage covenant is an exchange of persons, the gift of self to the other. The man gives himself to his wife. The woman gives herself to her husband. I belong to you, and you belong to me. That's the marriage covenant. And that's the covenant that God makes with his people. You will be my people, and I will be your God, in exchange of persons. Throughout the Old Testament, God makes this covenant, first to Adam, then to Noah, and then to Abraham, and then to Moses, and finally to David. Time and time again, God makes and renews this covenant with his people. And time and time again, his people break this covenant. With each renewal of his covenant, God gives rules to help his people to uphold their end of the exchange. In his covenant with Adam, God gave ground rules for how man was to relate to God. Adam and Eve disobeyed those rules. God renewed his covenant with Noah and gave him new rules after the flood. But eventually these rules were broken by Noah's descendants. God renewed his covenant with Abraham, but Abraham's descendants fell into idolatry and turned away from God. God renewed his covenant with Moses and codified the rules of his covenant with the Ten Commandments as an aid for keeping the covenant. Once again, God's people turned away from him, so God renewed his covenant with David, giving him laws regarding the temple sacrifices. In fact, each time God gives or renews his covenant, the covenant is sealed with the blood of sacrifice. From Abel to Noah, to Abraham, to Moses, to David. At the heart of God's covenant is a law, and and God's covenant is always sealed by sacrifice. Even though the law of the covenant is a gift from God, an aid for his people to keep the covenant, the people considered the law to be extrinsic, to be imposed upon them. In his ray of sunshine, the prophet Jeremiah tells of a future day when God will make a new covenant with his people. The law of the new covenant, however, will no longer seem extrinsic or imposed, but will be written on the very heart of God's people. No longer will God's law be external, but it will be internalized, making it natural for people to keep the covenant. Every Jew at the time of Jesus would have been well-versed in this passage from Jeremiah, this promise of a new covenant from God. It is in this context, the context of this long-awaited new covenant, that Jesus raises the chalice at the Last Supper and declares himself to be the new and eternal covenant. Jesus himself is the new covenant prophesized by Jeremiah. And like the old covenant, the new covenant is made and reinforced in the blood of sacrifice, 
Jesus' own sacrifice, Jesus' own blood, the blood that will be poured out on the cross, made already present in the chalice at the Last Supper. Remember that a covenant is an exchange of persons. In the new covenant, God gives us his very self in the person of his Son. At the Last Supper and at every Mass, Jesus gives us his very person. The Eucharist is the body, blood, soul, and divinity of Jesus. In exchange, he asks for us. He asks that we be his people. Listen to the words of Eucharistic Prayer 3 today. We pray that Jesus, given to us in the Eucharist, will in return make of us an eternal offering to God. Make of us an eternal offering to God, an exchange of persons. The purpose of God's covenant, old and new, is that people will return to him. As Jesus says today in the gospel, as he is lifted up from the earth in sacrifice, he will draw everyone to himself. That is the purpose of God's new covenant, made through the sacrificial blood of his son, to draw everyone to God. Remember that at the heart of any covenant is a law. At the heart of the new covenant is the new law, God's law of love. It is the very essence of what the old law aimed for but failed to achieve, love. Love of God above all things and love of neighbor as oneself. At every celebration of the Mass, God renews his covenant with us in the Eucharist. As we partake of the Eucharist, we partake of the new covenant. We take the law of the covenant, God's law of love, the very life of Christ into ourselves. This is how the law of God's covenant is written onto our heart by partaking of the Eucharist. This is how God's law of love becomes not an extrinsic imposed law, but internalized, written on our heart through the Eucharist. This is why Vatican II called the Eucharist, the celebration of the Mass, the source and summit of Christian life. In this fifth week of Lent, as we approach Holy Week, let us prepare ourselves through penance to worthily receive the new covenant, not only on Holy Thursday, but at every celebration of the Mass, so that God's law of love may be renewed in our heart through the Eucharist. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. 
I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. During this Lenten season of grace, we make our prayers to our Heavenly Father, the one who has the power to save us. For the Church, that we may live life always faithful to God, to God's covenant placed within us and written on our hearts, that we will be his people and he will be our God. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For Holy Family Parish in the Archdiocese of Boston, that we may each prayerfully consider our support to the Catholic appeal and respond with generosity and love. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our government leaders, elected and appointed, that they may recognize the sanctity of the human person created by, by God in the image and likeness of God and work to protect human life in all its stages, from conception to natural death. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all impacted by the coronavirus and for divine intervention to stop the spread of the virus, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who carry the burden of their sins, that through the sacrament of reconciliation they may experience the mercy of God, who forgives our evil doing and remembers our, our sin no more, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our parishioners, that during this year of the Eucharist, and especially in this Lenten season of grace, we may, we, we may each grow in our devotion to the true presence of Jesus in the Blessed Sacrament. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who have died, that Jesus may draw all faithful departed to himself, especially at this Mass for Wilfred Moretti. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the petitions received on our parish prayer line and for the personal needs and intentions we offer in the silence of our heart. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. God of mercy, graciously hear the prayers of your people, united to you through the new covenant of your Son, through Christ our Lord. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you. Fruit of the earth and work of human hands, it will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you. Fruit of the vine and work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Pray, brethren, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Hear us, Almighty God, and having instilled in your servants the teachings of the Christian faith, graciously purify them by the workings of this sacrifice, through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. 
Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God. For you have given your children a sacred time for the renewing and purifying of their hearts, that freed from disordered affections, they may so deal with the things of this passing world as to hold rather to the things that eternally endure. And so with all the angels and saints we praise you, as without end we acclaim, Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread. And giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith we proclaim. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church, and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself, Grant that we, who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son, and filled with his Holy Spirit, may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, and with all the saints, on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth, with your servant Francis, our Pope, and Sean, our Bishop, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family, whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, 
gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who were pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory, through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you, look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Lamb of God, Lord Jesus Christ, Son of the Holy God, who by the will of the Father and the work of the Holy Spirit, through your death gave life to the world, free me by this your most holy body and blood from all my sins and from every evil, keeping always faithful to your commandments, and never would we be parted from you. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. It is with profound respect for the Eucharist and for your safety and well-being that we have this procedure for the reception of Holy Communion. And as we begin to welcome more and more people back to Mass, we will continue to repeat these instructions for their benefit. So please follow the guidance of the seating coordinators using the blue circles in the center aisles to keep a space between you and your neighbor. As you approach, please be sure you're wearing your mask Hold your hands open and flat and allow the host to be placed onto your palm. Then with the host on your palm, walk to the blue square for your section of the church. Remove your mask, consume the host, and then return to your same seat by way of the side aisles, again, always giving space to your neighbor. Thank you for your cooperation in this process, which is what makes the reception of Holy Communion during this time possible.
Let us pray. We pray, almighty God, that we may always be counted among the members of Christ, in whose body and blood we have communion, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Cardinal Sean will offer a five-night Lenten retreat this Monday through Friday at 7 p.m. on Catholic TV and catholictv.org. Join other members of the parish this Tuesday at 7 p.m. on Zoom and enjoy a 20-minute prayer experience called Lexio Divina, which invites reflection on a passage of sacred scripture. To participate, click on the prayer tab on our parish website. If you're in a ministry here at Holy Family and have not yet completed a yearly quarry form, please do so as soon as possible. There are quarry forms in the front narthex that you can complete today and have a priest or staff member sign off for you or make an arrangement with Kristen in the parish office. Holy Family now offers confidential caring spiritual support for those experiencing addiction as well as for their loved ones who are suffering due to this affliction. Sponsored by the Archdiocese of Boston I Thirst Healing Ministry, a trained parishioner is available to support you or your loved one. For more information, please see the item in this week's bulletin. As you leave Mass today, you'll find print copies of our weekly bulletin on the racks attached to the offertory collection receptacles. In there, you'll find our Holy Week and Easter schedule, including additional opportunities for confession. And on a table at the doors of the church, you will find Easter flower envelopes, as well as envelopes for the one collection to be taken up at Easter, which supports the health and retirement needs of the priests of the Archdiocese of Boston. Your generosity to the Easter collection is greatly needed and much appreciated. And of course, one final bit of instruction. Please always follow the guidance of the seating coordinators when exiting the building, as we do exit mostly from the rear forward. And if you do have an offering, please have it ready to drop in the offertory collection boxes located at the doors leading into the narthex. The Lord be with you. Bow down for the blessing. Bless, O Lord, your people who long for the gift of your mercy and grant that what at your prompting they desire, they may receive by your generous gift through Christ our Lord. And may the blessing of Almighty God, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit come down upon you and remain with you forever. Go forth, the Mass is ended. <laughs>